Hi, it's Harry Redknapp here. You're listening to a proper podcast. It's the Alan Hudson podcast. It's proper football, proper talk. You know, and we used to see Paulie all the time. It's Chester Barnes, who's sadly just passed away. Right, um, yeah, yeah. He knew Paulie very well. And uh, we'd go to Fontwell. And, you know, there's the greatest football, one of the greatest footballers of all time. We sit, stood quietly in the bar, nobody fussing over him, people speaking to him as a human being rather than as a superstar. And, and he'd have it, he would just, just, just to hear him. Just, and, and I would, again, it's, only, it's lovely to talk to you about these things because I, I wouldn't know it otherwise. You know, I wouldn't, it, it's only you reminded me these things. What a privilege to. to <clears throat> well, to, I, I, I remember, him. Pete, I, I've been to, I spent the whole week at Royal Ascot with Paulie but in a hotel. After the West German game, I, I spent a day at Epsom, the Derby day. But I, I remember one day at Kempton, uh, he was telling me the, he was telling me so his hero was Leicester Piggott. Yeah, yeah. And he he bought a, he bought he had a horse when he was playing for Arsenal called Go Go Gunner. <laughs> yeah. And he 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 what he, he pleaded the trainer to get Leicester to ride it. Yeah. That's all he wanted the horse for. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Les, and Leicester rode this horse, and it was no good. It was no <laughs> good. And oh, he had a broken leg. He had a cast on his leg, and he was at the. He was in the bar at Kempton. He said, "I was standing here, Al." He says, "No, I went out after the race, and I chased Leicester across the paddock with a broken leg." <laughs> he said, "He's got, he's got the saddle over his arm." He said, "I'm squealing at him, Leicester, <laughs> Leicester." He said, and, and Leicester just looked over his shoulder, and he said. Can it? He said, can it? <laughs> and before he went, oh no! Oh, he's <laughs> so he, shattered, he shattered every illusion. <laughs> the um, Chester and I can't who named he would be our last. If you're good on, think, who was our last 400 meter? This is in the 70s, the last 400 meter um, hurdle winner. He was a school teacher in nice fellow. I did a did something with him anyway. Not David Before Emery. David Emery. He said, Chester, he said that him and Borley did superstars. So, the, uh, but they'd be on the piss all night, you see. So they'd be coming in at five o'clock in the morning. I've been at nightclubs all the morning. Just as David Emery was coming out the hotel going for his morning run. Before <laughs> David Emery won, won the uh, superstars. And I don't think Borley had. Chester did very good, but no, sorry, I'm going on to Leicester. Oh, what a magnificent man he he, he is, and and such great, you know, he, such a sense of humour. Such, I one of the you know, again the privileges. I, I once I had to go to Australia. To, I didn't have. To, I was retired, and they had an old. I don't know why they invited me. Anyway, they invited me down to an old timers <laughs> racing in Australia, and Leicester was there, and. Uh, God, this is this is my God, you know. This is like you. I don't know who your God is, Alan. I don't know. This is the greatest sportsman I've ever met, and and uh, anyway, I, I, so I'm, I'm in total awe of him. I'd hardly say anything to him, and we'd we'd had a fair bit of time. That's my son ringing. Get rid of him. Hold on, I'll come back. Where are we? How do I press? <laughs> uh, you're back again. I look, you're back again. That's it. there you are. So we're in Australia. We're riding, and and um, I. I was sat next, so we're riding for the Melbourne Racing Club, we're riding for them, and they looking after us fantastic. So we, they've given us a box, and we're sat down in a uh, in a box, and I'm sat next to him, you see, thing, and he, and he said, uh, and, and because he's got the speech impediment, people speak for him, you see. So one of the, and another English jockey, Jimmy Lindley, said, Lester's, said to me, you know, Lester's brain is, Brilliant, he said. Absolutely brilliant. He said he stood in the paddock with me yesterday. He said he said that horse going around there that that'll win. He said because um, it's size two hundred and fifty thousand Australian dollars. A brilliant horse. He said it won. You know, and then Lester's just saying nothing. So we, I, I start eating the meal again, and and then Lester goes, Gray also win the next race. Christ, he has a chance to make a few quid while I'm over here with a genius. So I got my race card up. Look down to the race card, find this grey horse. It was a race for grey horses only. 
<laughs> he was just brilliant fun. And because of his speech impediment, because of his deafness, he always comes in late into a conversation, you know, and it, therefore comedy is about throwing you the wrong way. He always throws you the wrong way. He, he honestly, the stories he told me, he was just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man. He, and still my sporting hero. Yeah. I sat next to him one day at Olympia all day long. We were signing these photographs. God knows what he was doing there to get to get away. And, uh, <laughs> they must have been did, all, I, I was having fun with all these players, former players, mainly Chelsea players and uh, my friends. And uh, all Lester done was chuckle under his breath. And then Peter, yeah. I asked him. I asked him for his autograph. And. Uh, I got some money out of my pocket. I think it was a fiver, and I asked him to sign this fiver. And he thought I was, he thought I was having, he thought I was making, yeah, because of the, you know, the, the prison thing. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, anyway, he signed it, and I'm, I'm sure he signed it in Arabic. <laughs> you couldn't read, you couldn't read, because he couldn't read or write, could he? Um, but all he did was smile the whole time. Yeah. No, nah, he loved me. Little quips, you know. I mem I remember when he came. We went to a racing do when he. Um, it makes me want to cry now. Um, when he just came out and he came into the room, and the whole room stood up and clapped him in. The yeah. the, the the respect that the people had for him is just just enormous. Now a magnificent man.